Howdy folks, Dave of Chaos Crafting here. Today, I'm going to build a portal to use with my D&D group. Here's a sample of one that I did a couple years ago. And as you can see, it looks like a dwarf. So not that, not, not, not that fancy. Kind of just a, uh, a plain old door with a nose. So you're, you're wondering, well, well, that's not a very exciting portal, Dave. Especially since it's so flat and kind of one-sided. Well, here's, here's the cool part. This portal was made to hold an electronic device to put a animated GIF into the portal itself. Aha, uh -huh. have I piqued your interest? Excellent. So, this is a nice size, but unfortunately, I think it's a little too small. And like I said, one-sided. That, and the party just recently picked up this really awesome Sky Coach. So, I think I need to build a portal that the entire ship can fit through. A big portal is going to, of course, require a big device. One that can display the portal graphic. I'm going to use this tablet. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into building a large three-dimensional portal. XPS foam is my material of choice. I'll use a couple project panels I picked up at the local hardware store. When I'm working with material that's too large to fit on the Proxon, I just use a T-square and a nice sharp uh, utility knife. You may notice I don't have a detailed plan. Typically, I do like to draw up exactly what I'm going to build. But I'm on holiday break. I'm on vacation. I may be having an adult beverage or two, or three. So I'm gonna play this by ear, and we'll just see how it goes. When cutting XPS foam, you don't have to cut all the way through the sheet. You can cut partially, maybe like halfway, a couple good passes, and then you can snap it on the edge of the table. Using the tablet itself, I'll mark out where I need to cut. I'm kind of seeing the tablet sandwiched between two of these one inch thick pieces of foam. So I'll need to take some scrap and cut down probably quarter inch spacers. Now that the foam is cut to size, I'll go ahead and freehand a portal design. I'm kind of thinking Stranger Things, uh, Guardian on the Edge of Forever from, from Star Trek. I don't want it to be perfect. I, I don't want it to be flat. So I'm going to give it some edges and some character. And a quick Sky Coach sizing. It checks out. I want to cut both the front and the back of this foam sandwich at the same time. So I'm going to take the two pieces and I'm going to tape them together. And now it's time to break out the freehand hot wire knife. This gets fun. Since the hot wire knife is only so deep, I'm gonna to need to take several passes through these pieces of foam. Make sure you save all the scrap. You can use it later, trust me. I'm not trying to be precise with this cut. Let your hand shake a little bit, get some uneven lines. It'll look more natural. I also decided to keep the pieces together, left and right. I didn't want to cut it all the way down the middle. I figured that would be a little bit easier when I'm trying to line up everything. Here's where the hot wire knife really shines. Cutting bevels. You can make it look so organic, uh, kind of like blasted apart. 
I was really enjoying this part of the process. I kept at this until I got something I really liked. Here I'm gluing in the spacers for the sides and the bottom. Whatever you do, don't glue the sandwich together yet. We're going to need to paint the inside before we finally glue the two halves together. Let's do a quick check, just to see how it looks, because I'm impatient, and I think you'd want to see. I like it. This is going the right direction. And now it's time to mod podge the inside, because you're not going to get to it once you glue this together. Let's add some depth to this portal, shall we? With a whole bunch of scrap foam. That's right, the scrap box provides. Now, I, I have no real plan here. I'm just gonna glue some foam to the left of the portal and to the right of the portal. I'll then use the hot wire knife to cut it down, make it look like stone, maybe a uh, cliff face, you know, something like that. At this point, I decided I wanted two different environments on either side of the portal. One side of the portal was going to be natural rocks, cliffs, plants. The other side of the portal was going to be castle wall, interior of a dungeon. So here I have started to glue together the layers of the natural side, the cliff face side. There's a notch there in the foam, which really didn't do much of anything, but I did it anyway, because I was on a roll. Free form, just slapping stuff together. I do this for both the left and the right side of the portal. I try to keep the layers fairly random to give it a more natural look. And I go ahead and I glue it to the base and the portal itself. Okay, my friends, I owe you an apology. I was so engrossed with this hot wire cutter and making these really cool shapes out of the foam, I kind of forgot to back the camera up a bit to give you a better view of the entire process. This was not because I was drinking. Just, just ignore that fact. But you see how it's done. This is all kind of freeform. Just go with it. Let your inner foam carving self express. When I'm carving, I try to make many edges and facets in the foam. This is what transforms it from flat foam to interesting rock. You will notice I am leaving lots of flat area. Th this is important. This will give your players areas to interact with. You don't want this just to be a pretty backdrop. You want your players to engage with the terrain, allowing them to create unique and interesting scenarios. And finally, I add some scrap to the front to break up this edge. And it's time for Using more of the scrap cuts, I start to add details to the various surfaces. I mean, I couldn't just let these unique shapes go to waste. Eventually, I will get a ball of aluminum foil and I'll texture all of the flat surfaces. That should kind of blend it all together.
As we know, fiddly bits can be time consuming. You can do as much or as little as you want when it comes to putting details into your terrain. The more attention you pay to this step though, the more realistic it looks. This part is very self-explanatory. Using some spackle, or in this case I'm using adhesive grout, fill in all the cracks and crevices that you don't want to see. This will help blend all of the transitions together. When you're done with this, you'll need to let it dry overnight. Next, we'll move to the interior. Okay, folks, I'm jumping ahead a bit here. I'm trying to keep this video at a viewable length, and, and honestly, there was just too much content. The interior is a dungeon environment, and I've used the techniques that I've described in a few of my other videos castle walls and watchtower, namely. I'll be sure to link them in this video's description. And if anyone yells at me, I'll go ahead and create a mini video of just me doing this side of the portal. Honest. Step one, we're going to prime the entire piece of terrain using Mod Podge plus black paint. Bam! <laughs> I know, I know, that's, that's, that's fairly bad. But honestly, you need to make sure that the foam is protected. And the Mod Podge plus black paint gives you an excellent primer of which to put on some additional colors. In this instance, I'm going to start with a dark burnt umber. Now these are just cheap craft paints that I've picked up at the local whatever store and it's gonna move lighter up through like milk chocolate, mocha, and eventually a natural buff. So it's gonna give it many layers of colors. And now I'm hungry for like, you know, a cookie. The technique used here is a dry brush. I'm using the cardboard as a palette to take some of the moisture from the paint. With light strokes, I am applying the pigment to the highest ridges of the foam. This is where doing a good carving really pays off because each of those facets, each of those little elements of the stone that you've left catches the paint and it allows there to be multiple layers. Here you can see I've worked all the way through my color palette from darkest to lightest. It's really making these rocks pop. You can see all the cracks and crevices. I think it's looking pretty good. The last step of painting is applying a terrain wash. Here I'm going to use some umber and some dark brown. Let it seep into the cracks and crevices, give it additional layer of shadow. You know, you could touch up areas you may have been a little heavy handed with when you were dry brushing. Yeah, again, Gonna to have to let this dry a while. Once it's dry, we can get to the finishing touches. Continuing with my trend of not having a plan, I'm just gonna glue stuff to this thing until it looks good. Now I know you can collect this type of moss from nature, but nature has bugs and dirt and other gross stuff that I'd rather not bring into my house. So yeah, I went and sped the money to get this stuff from the crap store. Now 
Wow, it's done. Portal accomplished. I am super happy with how this turned out. I, I mean, I was a little worried at times not having a plan, but I got over it. If you like this video, do the YouTube yada yada and let me know about it. At times, I need motivation. And when I do, I turn to this community of fellow crafters. I watch your videos and I am inspired by all the creativity I see. Thank you. I can't wait to see how my players use this terrain. Oh, and this is, this is not just a one-shot use. If the dice gods are on their side, they could be rewarded with this location as a base of operations. So I'll be using this terrain on the regular. And with that, my friends, this project is done. If you have any suggestions on videos you'd like to see in the future, go ahead and drop me a comment below. And until next time, peace.